Christian College presents Bible Prophecy Lectures, Revelation Verse by Verse with Special Prophecy Topics. Main Teacher, Rev. Dr. Paul Lee Tan and Co-Teacher, Dr. Christine Joy Tan. Rev. Dr. Paul Lee Tan graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary with a Master of Theology and at Grace Theological Seminary with a Doctor of Theology. A pastor, a seminary professor, and a Bible prophecy speaker for 50 years to over 500,000 people worldwide, he authored several popular books on prophecy and illustrations. Rev. Dr. Paul Lee Tan is a founding pastor and senior pastor emeritus of Grace Christian Church of the Philippines and the senior chaplain emeritus of Grace Christian College. He is a former director of Asian Studies at Dallas Theological Seminary. Co-teaching with him is his beloved daughter, Dr. Christine Joy Tan. Dr. Christine Joy Tan has two earned PhD degrees from Dallas Theological Seminary in Bible Exposition and from the University of North Texas in Higher Education. Dr. Christine Joy Tan now serves as the president of Grace Christian College. She is also a Bible prophecy lecturer, a Christian educator, author of several journal articles, and editor of books. To date, Dr. Christine has led and co-led some 30 Bible land tours in the Middle East and Europe under the Paul Lee Tan Prophetic Ministries. I have the honor and the privilege to present to you Rev. Dr. Paul Lee Tan. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our weekly Bible study on Revelation verse by verse. The Bible promises a triple blessing to all who study the book of Revelation. Blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Revelation 1, 3. What we are studying is so very unique in the Bible. Christ himself in heaven, writing to believers on earth, using the first person pronoun, I. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11 says, What thou seest, Christ saying to John, Write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia Minor, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Today, we continue our study of Christ's seven letters to the seven churches. This is part two of Revelations, chapter two and three. In our last session, we observed that all the seven letters are identical or similar in their content structure. That is, all letters start with first Christ's divine titles, then his approval of the church, then Christ's disapproval of the church, then Christ's advice or counsel to that church, finally Christ's promise and hope for that church. We are doing something different. We are combining all the seven churches together, studying each of these five elements or themes together. That is, all their good points and then all their bad points together and so on. This gives us a sense of what Christ totally likes and dislikes 
in his churches. In our last session, we had studied Christ's titles and approvals. Today, we continue on Christ's disapproval of the churches. We will just read the Bible verses and listen carefully to what Jesus said. Then we will comment on the key words of those Bible verses. <clears throat> Christ's disapproval of the churches to Ephesus. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. To Smyrna, an ideal church, no disapproval at all. To Pergamos, thou hast followed the doctrine of Balaam, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Also, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. To Thyatira, thou sufferest that woman Jezebel to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. To Sardis, I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. To Philadelphia, another ideal church, no disapproval. Finally, to Laodicea, the worst church, plenty of censure. Thou art neither cold nor hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, I will spew them out of my mouth says Christ. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. When we combine Christ's disapprovals, we note the key words at the right-hand column of this chart. Keyword A. You have left your first love. The first love is the sparkle of honeymoon love. That's what Christ desired for all Christians towards Him. After Christ's resurrection, He told the disciples to go to Galilee and there by the seashore of Galilee, Sea of Galilee, Jesus prepared a fellowship meal with them. After the meal, Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? Perhaps because earlier Peter had denied Jesus three times. Peter answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love thee. Then Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Jesus knew Peter would become one of the greatest apostles in the Christian church. But Jesus wanted Peter to love him first. Love for Jesus should be before service for him. Keyword B. Your works are not perfect. Some people flatter us and say our work is perfect. But what really counts is what God said. God's standard is not just on the results, but on eternal values. Perhaps you have seen people wearing bracelets with the four letters WWJD, which means, what would Jesus do? As Christians, we want to make sure when making decisions to first ask the question, what would Jesus do in this instance? This is really the key to successful Christian living. Only one life it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Keyword C. You are neither cold or hot. The water supply of Laodicea 
was from a second-hand source. It came from a city called Hieropolis, above it, with refreshing hot springs. By the time it, the water arrived at Laodicea, it was lukewarm, too tepid for drinking or for bathing. To be lukewarm is to be indifferent, to be without commitment, to be without right or wrong. Anything goes and is okay. To be lukewarm towards Christ is so disgusting. Christ said he would spew them out of his mouth. Keyword number D. You accepted the doctrine of Balaam. In the Old Testament, the prophet Balaam was very greedy for money. He advised the enemy leaders to use sexual immorality to lead the Israelites, the Israelites to sin and into defeat. And so the doctrine of Balaam is idolatry and fornication. Actually, idol worship is basically self-will and godless rebellion. And sexual license is from greed and selfishness. Keyword number E, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. We had already described the Nicolaitans as advocating compromise with the world. They appear to be religious, but they are not totally Christ-centered. There is a hymn written by a young missionary to India as follows. I would be true, for there are those who trust me. I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. I would be brave, for there is much to dare. Keyword number F. I am rich, needing nothing. When I was studying at Dallas Theological Seminary in 1962, President John F. Kennedy was the U.S. President. He announced a nationwide movement to say sorry or I am sorry. He encouraged Americans to be more humble and to admit mistakes. From that time on, I noticed even until now, Americans tend to automatically say sorry or to apologize. That became a sort of nationwide habit. This picture of President Kennedy visiting Dallas in 1963, where he was assassinated there, I was studying at the seminary in Dallas. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus had already warned his churches about this. He scolded the church of Laodicea for saying, I am rich, needing nothing. Instead of saying as a habit, I am sorry, and it is all God's grace. They repeatedly say, I am okay, I need nothing from God. This is an attitude that Christ found disgusting and would spew them out of his mouth. Keyword number G. No censure for Smyrna and Philadelphia. Two perfect churches in Jesus' viewpoint. Smyrna and Philadelphia must have been prayerful churches and Berean churches which daily listen to and search the scriptures. The fourth combined themes or ad is the advice or counsel of Christ. Christ's advice to the churches. To Ephesus, remember Therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. To Smyrna, 
you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. To Pergamos, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. To Thyatira, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already. Hold fast till I come. To Sardis, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If thou shalt not watch, I will come to thee as a thief. To Philadelphia, hold fast that no man take thy crown. To Laodicea, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich, and white raiment, that thou may be clothed, and anoint thine eyes with eyesalve, that thou may see. When we combine Christ's advice, we note these seven key words. First, remember and repent. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son. When the prodigal had spent all that he had and was feeding swine, his father did not go out looking for him. The father waited at home until the son voluntarily repented and decided to come back home. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. That is true repentance. Luke 15, 22, But his father said, We must celebrate, for the son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. When a Christian truly repents and says, I am sorry, I, am, I was wrong, to God and to others. Our Heavenly Father stands ready to forgive. Key word B, do the first works. Revelation 2, 4 to 5, chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works. Christ wrote these words to the second generation of Christians at Ephesus. Some 40 years earlier, the Apostle Paul had pastored the Ephesian church, their first generation believers. Apparently, the second generation had slowly left their original biblical and doctrinal stand. They were slowly diverted to worldly and compromising directions. Christ warned them, go back to basics, do the first works. When making decisions, don't disregard the so-called old school. First, consider the basics, the foundations, the first works, what the Bible called first fruits, which was presented to God in the temple. Because that's how God's work had originally flourished and started and was blessed by God. Now, this may not be a good illustration, but suppose you are entering a restaurant and you are confused with what to order from the menu, may I helpfully decide for you. Simply prefer the so-called original item. That's what made the restaurant famous in the first place. For example, at Kentucky Fried Chicken, first try the original recipe. Or at Peiwei Chinese Restaurant in the States, the original shrimp. Of course, this is not absolute. 
but it might save your time and buyer's remorse. Keyword number C, hold fast and watch. Be a guardian, be a watchman at the Lord's gates. We believe now could be the end times, and Satan is working overtime to harm God's work. Hold fast, be vigilant in your faith, doctrine, and practice. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul tells Christians to put on the Christian armor. He describes six pieces of a Roman soldier's armor. First, the helmet of salvation. Now, the helmet is always the topmost portion of a soldier's outfit. It protects his head. Let others know that you are a Christian. Stand out and tell others of your salvation in Christ. That's your helmet. Secondly, take on the shield of faith. Develop strong faith in the Almighty God. Is your God stronger than your problems? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Number three, take on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is vitally important for it protects the soldier's heart and lungs. It is a defensive weapon to protect against enemy onslaught. Let righteousness and justice be the trademark of your Christian life. Number four, put on the belt of truth. The belt holds all body equipment in place and in order. The person who tells half truths and lies will soon be in disorder and in lost control. He must tell more half truths to cover his previous lies. Jesus said, Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than this, come out of evil. Matthew 5, 37. Be truthful. Black is black, white is white. Minimize the gray areas in your Christian life. Number five, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the Bible. Now, the sword is an offensive weapon. Use it to win the war. Some Christians are unprepared to use the Bible and so are constantly losing spiritual battles. One way is to take time and do Bible study like what we are doing now. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Number six, the feet fitted with the gospel of peace. The feet are what enables the soldier to stand strong and to run fast. They affect our balance, grip, the power, and movement. In martial arts, learning how to stabilize and control one's feet is the beginning of all martial training. In the same way, the foundation of our day-to-day -day Christianity is the gospel of Christ. Here it is called the gospel of peace because it gives us peace, the Bible, while fighting the stresses of life. We can cast all our cares upon Him, God, because He cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7 And then we can share this gospel of peace to others as we walk and run in God's kingdom services. Keyword number D, be faithful unto death. 
Some time ago, I was preaching in Korea. One day, they took me to visit the Korean martyrs' village outside the city of Seoul. No one lived inside the village. It was built to honor the Korean Christian martyrs who died under Japanese occupation about a hundred years ago. Now inside the main hall are hundreds of pictures of the martyrs. As I look at the pictures one by one, I came to the end of the display. And as I look, I was shocked and surprised to see myself in the mirror, in the picture, the last picture. You know the reason. A mirror was placed inside the last picture, and below it were these words, I can be a martyr. Keyword number E. Christ gives an open door. The Philadelphia church had a little strength. It was probably the smallest church among the seven. And yet Christ promised them an open door, open vision, unlimited boundaries for the gospel, which no man can shut. We remember the amazing story, Bible story of how the Israelites conquered Jericho city. They simply marched around Jericho once a day for six days and then seven times on the seventh day and Jericho's wall fell by themselves. Now how did Joshua know to use this strange military tactic? The reason is the night before, Joshua had met a heavenly messenger from God outside the walls of Jericho. Now, Joshua himself was a powerful man of war. He was the commander-in-chief of some two million Israelites now marching into the Promised Land. But the Bible reported, Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Joshua 5.14 Joshua bowed down to the ground, humbled himself, and prayed for guidance. And that night, outside Jericho, God told him how to conquer the city without a fight. Brothers and sisters, dear friends, the more we are helpless and in a hopeless situation and are of little strength, it's okay. The more God wants to use us to do impossible things. Prayer changes things. Keyword Number F. To buy gold, white cloth, eye salve from Christ. Revelation 3.18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and anoint with eye salve that thou mayest see. Christ offers them refined gold, gold that could stand the test of fire. The city's main industry was the garment industry, black woolen garments. But Christ offered them white garments. Laodicea was also medically noted for an ointment to ease eye disorders. Christ said, get eye drops from him. Christ reminded them, you make eye medicine, but you are blind. You make glossy black wool clothes, but you are naked. 
you have some sweet mula money, but you are poor and disgusting. The fifth and final combined themes from Christ are the promises of Christ. Christ promise. Note that all the seven letters promises start with the words he that overcometh. To Ephesus, to him that overcomes, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To Smyrna, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. To Pergamos, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written. To Thyatira, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works, to him will I give power over the nations, and I will give him the morning star. To Sardis, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. To Philadelphia, him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. To Laodicea, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. When we combine Christ's promises, Note these key words on the right of our chart. Keyword A, to him that overcometh, repeatedly mentioned in these passages. This word overcome has a military meaning of conquering and victory. The Apostle Paul writes, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Romans 8, 35 and 37 Brothers and sisters, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Have strong faith in God, and you will be an overcomer through Christ who loves you. Keyword number B Christ will give the crown of life. Now, the Bible records many eternal rewards for overcomers in life, in our Christian life on earth. As for crown, Rewards, there are five kinds of crown. Five kinds of crown listed in the Bible. The first is the crown of rejoicing. First Thessalonians 2.19 It's called the soul winner's crown for those who bring others to Christ. Certainly, evangelist Billy Graham, but surely even the unknown believers who did their best the witness for Christ will earn this crown. Secondly, the crown of glory. 1 Peter 5, 4 For the faithful shepherds of God's people in spiritual leadership. This will be for faithful pastors, missionaries, elders, deacons, fellowship officers, homeschool parents, and other faithful spiritual mentors of others. The third crown is the victor's crown. 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27 For those 
who are purposeful and qualified in running the Christians to race. God knows who they are, and all qualified overcomers would be included. The fourth crown is the crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy 4 8. For those who look for Christ's return in the clouds and for their eternal home in glory in heaven. I think of Dr. Thomas Ice, my good friend of the Pre Trip Rapture Center. Dr. David Regan, another good friend of Lamb Lion Ministries and many other schools and leaders who are prophecy, teachers and mentors of others. I think of a friend from Hong Kong who memorized the entire book of Revelation before coming to the Philippines to study under me many years ago. Number five crown is the crown of life. Revelation 2.10 For those who triumph over persecution, temptation, and even martyrdom. As we come closer and closer to the last days, many believers will suffer persecution, slanders, injustice, even martyrdom. But Jesus will give them the crown of life. It was Jim Elliot, the martyr, missionary to South America, who said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. Keyword number C, the tree of life. Originally, in the Garden of Eden, there was the Tree of Life. But with Adam and Eve's sin, it became strictly off-limits to fallen mankind. But now, praise God, Christ welcomes believers to eat of the Tree of Life in the New Jerusalem. The Bible says in Revelation 22, 2, there was the tree of life in the new heaven and new earth, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield her fruit every month. So, eternity's tree of life, just one tree, would bear twelve different kinds of fruits, all at once, every month. Imagine heaven having celestial mangoes, strawberries, peaches, so forth, all on one single tree, different every month. Wow, all kinds of exotic fruits made by God for us to enjoy in heaven. Remember Jesus ate fish with his disciples after his resurrection, and we would all enjoy eating in our immortal bodies, resurrected bodies, in the new heaven and new earth, forever. Key word number D, a white stone with a new name. Now talking about new names, I think I had a little experience with them. Here is my birth certificate. My parents gave me the Chinese name, Hong Kai for Victor at birth. In 1937, China was at war with Japan, and we of course wanted victory. So I was named Victor in Chinese. But after the war, my grandparents discovered another grandson called Victor in China. And so my parents had to change my name to Big Wisdom, Hong Pok, Hong Po. That was a hopeful wish, as I was only in grade school. Another change happened to my dead 
of birth, also beyond my control. I was born November 1st, but the Manila City Hall entered an extra number one, and my official birthday is even now November 11, after 80 years. Maybe it was wartime again then, and a bullet had entered City Hall, and the clerk entered an extra one and ran away. Anyway, that's okay, because 1111 is easier to remember. Someday in heaven, Jesus would give me still another new name. That would be the best one, given by the Lord himself. If I continue to be an overcomer for Christ on earth. Keyword number E, clothed in white. Almost 60 years ago, before I went abroad to Dallas Theological Seminary in Texas, I was given two Bibles, one from my mother and one from my church in the Philippines. The cover pages of this Bible reads from the left on our screen. From Mother, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Typical for mothers to be concerned for their children. And praise God, he did. Secondly, the Bible from my church in 1962, Grace Gospel Church. Keep yourself pure for the master's use. Second Timothy 2.21 And for the next many years in U.S. seminaries, I treasured those important biblical words and I tried to follow Bible precepts even away from home, abroad. It was not easy and I failed several times because I still had the old carnal nature, even in seminary, and lived later even as a pastor for 50 years. And many times I would ask God to forgive and cleanse me. Truly, the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch, a wretch like me. But praise God, someday in heaven, I will be without my old sinful nature, with an all-glorified and resurrected body enjoying immortality, clothed in white forever. Praise God. Keyword number F. You will be kept from the hour of tribulation. Christ promised Christians to be kept from the hour of temptation or the tribulation that would come upon all the world. Someday there will be the seven year tribulation on earth when God's unprecedented judgment will be poured on this world and the result will be half the world's population would be dead. We will study that in Revelation chapter 6 to 18. But true Christians will not go through the tribulation. They would be raptured into heaven before the tribulation. The church is promised here to be kept from even the hour of the worldwide temptation or tribulation. And this is the pre-tribulation rapture position that we believe. Christ would come for us at any moment. So be prepared because he will come suddenly for the church. Keyword number G. Christ will sup or dine with us. Now I enjoy food. My first love probably is ice cream, 
But one time, my good sister in Houston, Texas, treated me to steak, the largest steak called tomahawk ribeye steak. And I ate it all. But you know, that's nothing compared to someday in heaven. The best is yet to come. Christ himself promised to dine with us forever. No need to worry about dieting. The best part is we will be with Christ, he who loved us so much and died for us. We want to be with him forever. Heaven is heaven because our Lord Jesus Christ is there. Today, Revelation 7 churches are all still there but in ruins, stones. But Christ continues to take care of the church, churches. The church is inside your heart and mind. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. From studying these seven letters of Christ, we have seen how Christ really knows and cares for his churches on earth. Jesus walks in the midst of the churches. Let us continue to listen to Christ's voice from heaven. Words of approval, disapproval, words of advice and counsel and words of hope and promises from Christ. For those who do not know Christ as personal Savior, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Imagine the head of the church is now standing outside the door, knocking at the heart's door. And how gracious that he should still be knocking. Shall we bow our heads? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for the joy of studying thy word, especially about the future. We thank thee for being our good shepherd who knows the future and leads our way. And Lord, for those who are not yet believers in Christ, we pray they will even now receive Jesus into their hearts and receive peace, joy, and hope in their daily lives for time and for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close this session, I have asked our beloved co-teacher, Dr. Christine Tan, to sing a hymn to glorify the Lord and to bless our hearts. Thank you very much. Sometimes the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face all sorrow will erase, 
So bravely run the race till we see Christ. At times the sky seems star with not a ray of light. We're tossed and driven on, no human help in sight. But there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problems, just go to him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day will soon be your, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven, a harp, a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished, we'll lay your burdens down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ.